The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Hey, how you all doing? My name is Jacob Shoup. I'm filling in for Steve Rhodes today. Uh, we have the Dow up 345 points. We have the NASDAQ up 208. And we have the S&P 500 up 50 0.15. It's a pretty good day for the indices. Um, usually when I fill in, I start with one of Tom's quotes, but uh, in the wake of the passing of Queen Elizabeth, I want to share a quote that she had when she um, rose to power. And it says, I declare before all of you that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service. And I think that's a really wide scale applicable thing for all of us today. I think in today's modern world, it's very easy to be cynical. Um, I think it's easy to kind of just focus on what we want. Um, so I think that uh, trying to apply something like that, serving others as well, um, is, a, is a really positive thing. We can all, uh, we can all take after her on that. Uh, my email is jacob at tfnn.com. If you have any questions, and our phone number is 877-927-6648. So today we have a few things that are going on. Um, I want to talk about Tesla. They're starting a um, new lithium mining process in Nevada. They purchased 10,000 acres. Um, Robinhood has released a, uh, a new investor index. Um, this, is, this index captures how... Um, their customers are investing. It's the top 100 stocks that are purchased on that platform. Maybe we can get a little bit into quantum computing. Um, and then also India and China have developed uh, new nasal COVID vaccines uh, that they believe are um, very effective and are just about to go into phase three trials. Um, some quicker news, uh, the Evergrande crisis going on in China um, <laughs> has deepened, surprisingly enough. Um, the lenders seized the headquarters um, the China state firm takes over Evergrande's holding in the Shenzhen Bank, um, and this was purchased at a discount of $1.05 billion versus the uh, value of $1.1 billion. Um, currently, Evergrande is still saddled with uh, $300 billion in liabilities. So let's go quickly to Robinhood. So as I said earlier, they've released a new index. Let's take a look over here. They released a new index of their top 100 stocks that their customers invest in. This is actually pretty interesting. I, I laughed um, audibly when I saw this chart here. Uh, this is the Robinhood Investor Index compared to the NASDAQ. Uh, now, of course, this, this time span is, is very short, so I'd love to see how this performed prior. Um, but uh, this is a good piece of marketing on their end. Um, they have huge holdings in Tesla, um, expanding to Ford and Neo uh, regarding energy, uh, excuse me, um, electrical vehicles. Um, their other large holdings are Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, consistently the top holdings. Um, investors in Robinhood lean towards large cap stocks, with about 75% large cap, uh, something about 15% mid cap, and 9% in small cap. And surprisingly, it actually is highly diversified. Um, I, I know it's easy to kind of poke fun of, you know, these kind of Reddit hedge funds, essentially, right? Like Wall Street bets um, or these kind of uh, just newer investors that entered the arena in 2020. Um, but it seems like these guys have some semblance of knowledge. Um, and so we'll see what goes on with there. Uh, excuse me, with that. Um, what else is new and smaller news? Kroger does a $1 billion stock buyback, which should be interesting to see how that pans out. And then YouTube, um, which is owned by Google, uh, they actually, one, one of the really big things that um, the younger generations use uh, Google for, and kind of one of the big you know, driving points is, is you, can, you can learn anything from it, right? There are so many educational programs. Um, some of the most prevailing comments on all of these are, um, wow, if you were my teacher in 
high school and college, I would have loved this more. Um, and you know, that's that's a valid that's a valid um, statement, I'm sure, for a lot of people. So Google is going to try to tap into that, and they are starting a new school video service. It's kind of interesting. I. Some of these new novel ideas we have here in the States are ones that um, have been tried many times for, for a while. Um, something that this reminds me of is in Korea, um, where they have English courses. Um, what it is is these, these massive online language courses. You pay to be a part of it. Um, a lot of it is really what is dubbed infotainment. So you, know, you get knowledge, you get educated, but it's also something entertaining to watch. Um, in today's world, with everything so fast-paced and entertainment on demand, uh, it's important for educators um, to be able to tap into that and, and utilize that um, to their benefit, whether that's for good or bad. So we'll see how that pans out. Google's obviously massive. Uh, I, I, getting into the education um, sector would be huge for them. Um, regarding Tesla, so they have purchased 10,000 acres in Nevada in order to extract lithium. What I was, what I was looking at today, um, and we'll go through this when we get back from the break, is really the, the complex process uh, that's involved in uh, getting, getting lithium from whatever the base source is. Tesla says, Elon in particular, um, has released a new patent on a novel extraction process. Uh, e <laughs> Elon, in, in his usual fashion, says that this is a license to print money. Sure, we'll see, but um, based on the patent and, and how the process goes, uh, they're suggesting that it could save up to 30% in the lithium mining uh, process. This would be huge in our competitive advantage against countries like China, against countries like Saudi Arabia. This obviously already blows um, the Andean countries out of the water, Chile, Argentina. Uh, they will not be able to compete. They have a um, far less efficient, um, although traditional, structure. Um, since we have a little bit in the break, we can kind of delve into it initially. Uh, this is going to be an acid-free saline extraction, which uh, essentially is just using table salt in part of the process. Totally novel. Um, the majority of our commercial lithium today um, extracts lithium from underground brine reserves, okay? So there is, there is uh, this salt solution below the earth. And what they do is they'll pump it up and they bring it into these things called salars. And I'm sure you've all seen, let's see here. I'm sure you've all seen these pools before. Let's see. Yeah, I'll have to bring it up after the break. There are these large pools that exist. They, they cover the entire landscape. They're not pretty at all. But the idea behind that is that um, you essentially do an evaporation process. Okay. So as uh, the evaporation process occurs, um, li hydrated lime is added to the brine, and this precipitates all these unwanted elements. This is the, always the major issue in extracting any kind of specific resource from the ground. Is um, everything is a nice patchwork of multiple minerals. Um, in order to do this through the evaporation process, they have to add lime to the brine to precipitate unwanted elements. Um, after the evaporation, um, excuse me, once the precipitation has occurred, the brine solution is at a certain level of lithium. And when we get back, we can go deeper, and I promise I won't bore you with this, especially after the, com uh, the comment on infotainment. Um, but I think it's worth knowing because this is definitely a, a big push in the future. And as I said last time, uh, governments are pushing for this as well. Uh, this is Jacob with TFNN, and we will be right back. inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner 
Ready Development Stage Gold Project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So I was looking in the den during the break, and uh, Jimmy D says, uh, just like solar and wind before it, the fascination in investor, trader, allure, and EV is way ahead of application and reality on a broad scale. There will be pockets, perhaps even years of disappointment on the road to EV promised land. And I, that is entirely true. Um, we definitely, in, in this new millennium, have a lot of hype surrounding uh, these kind of technologies of the future. And um, there, the internet is wrought with uh, people promising uh, new technologies to be out by some certain point. And if you really take an honest look at it, they're just not there yet. I think what's different with things like EVs, while there are massive efficiency issues regarding um, you know, size of batteries um, compared to uh, same weight of like petroleum or something like that, what's different at least in some context, is that we have these governments really pushing forward. This is not just the private sector trying to bring something to the market. Um, there are major incentives and pushes um, by global uh, governments around the world to get these out. And certainly, um, I, you know, to say that we'll all be driving electric vehicles by 2035 and be off something like petroleum is probably, probably not true. However, I think pushing for this, we will make larger leaps in progress in this technology than we would if we had uh, no kind of government um, incentive to do so. So going back to this, just to kind of recap what Tesla is doing and why I really think you should watch Tesla during this time, um, these, these processes to extract the lithium is difficult. Obviously, the the evaporation pool is you're, you're depending on uh, natural processes, essentially, right, uh, to evaporate out. And you have to treat it a bunch. This is a very slow process. It's not it's not um, uh, expensive, but it's very inefficient. The next way we have it is hard rock extraction, and this is where everyone's kind of looking at right now, um, especially in America. So places like Tennessee, places like Nevada, Texas on the Gulf Coast, um, these guys are going to be doing hard rock extraction. 
of it. Uh, again, you have the same issues. This lithium is mixed in with uh, so many uh, other kind of elements, and how do you get it? The way that we have it now, um, you have to take the hard rock, you have to crush it, you have to run it through, you have to wash it, you know, continually you have to mix it with sulfuric acid to precipitate a certain element. These are extraordinarily difficult processes and you don't get a lot of lithium out of it. What Elon Musk wants to do is during the milling process, you heat mill it, he wants to add just sodium chloride, just general table salt. Uh, this does add some kind of ion or cation to it. Um, and essentially what you get is a material, a starting material that has a far higher content of lithium in it. Now the process from there out um, is expected to be relatively the same. Um, there's, the, the patent just kind of goes into this one part of the process. Um, but this this is really huge. It's a novel way to solve this situation, this problem. It doesn't seem like anybody else is doing it. They're using clay, so I mean, this is not a, a deep mining kind of operation. Um, and this could really, in some ways, make us more competitive than we would have been prior. So I think it's really interesting uh, to do this. What else can we look at today? Um, Oh, another thing to look at regarding that is, is Lithium Americas is, is, is huge right now um, regarding uh, th this mining process. Let's see. So I think one thing we can get into, certainly on the, on the same topic as, uh, you know, hyped technology coming to you soon is quantum computing. Okay, so we have things like IB, uh, companies like IBM, Microsoft, Google, Alibaba. I mean, you name it, these big tech companies are trying to get into quantum computing. And I think that this is kind of an arcane subject for a lot of people. And I'm, I'm sure unless you are a quantum physicist, uh, if you're just a layman, the uh, complete intricacies of it are, are probably esoteric as well. But the idea behind quantum computing, which is being touted as the, uh, the future of computing, is uh, they use subatomic particles, okay? So these are like your electrons or your photons, and they're gonna put these things, they're gonna put these in, on the quantum level, you have this concept called superposition, right? So the, if we look at it in a binary sense, right? Your one and your zero, zero being off, one being on, in the, I suppose the higher physical world, you can only have one position, right? You're either on or you're off. The idea is that with superposition in the quantum context is it's not determined whether or not that is on or off. It needs to be observed for it to, however, it does exist in, that, in a superposition, right? It's not just theoretical, it truly does. And the reality of it, whether it is on or off, is determined once it is observed. So the idea of they want to exploit this concept um, in order to create these vast, vast computational networks, okay? And the idea is that you can apply this to problems, essentially, right? And it will solve problems more quickly than our traditional uh, computers would. This would be used in things such as, um, excuse me, like, uh, like uh, for genomic testing, um, for diseases, this will be used for things like um, AI systems. It'll be used for things like uh, just, let's see what we can get here. Financial institutions can use these for security purposes. Um, even something as simple as your daily car processing, um, the, the processing that your car's computer does um, can be greatly, uh, can greatly benefit from something like this. Um, we have financial institutions able to use quantum computing to design more effective and efficient investment portfolios, which is very interesting. Uh, for retail and institutional clients, they could focus on creating better trading simulators. And the big thing is improving fraud detection. Um, we have a grave lack of um, uh, computer cybersecurity people in this country. Um, we are hit constantly every day. I, I actually have a family member who in the past worked for a bank doing uh <coughs> excuse me doing cybersecurity and he said it was a constant barrage from uh state actors essentially to get into our financial institution um we have something like a two million 
like unit deficit in people <laughs> in, in, in labor for cybersecurity, so much so that entry level positions um, pay an enormous amount. Uh, having tools like quantum computing that can be uh, better at detecting these kind of breaches and in fact even um, encrypting uh, would, would be huge. Another big thing with this is the healthcare industry using quantum computing to develop new drugs and genetically targeted medical care. It could also power more advanced DNA research. And this is really the, in my opinion, the, the future of, of healthcare, okay? It is, we could get to a point where we have designed drugs for the individual based off of your genomic sequence. Really interesting, we can talk about that a little more when we come back, but these are things you have to be looking at. Then we can also talk about uh, in, in the same vein as, as Jimmy in the Den, why this is probably a little bit further off um, than we think. Um, we will be right back, folks. Again, our number is 877-927-6648. You can uh, message me in the Den or on YouTube. We'll be right back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. Um, so someone was looking at Gen Feng Company, which is a uh, Chinese lithium manufacturer uh, for electric batteries in um, China. Look here, I, a, a lot of these lithium companies got kind of hammered um, in the beginning of this year, and even halfway through the year. Um, I don't know much about this company. I don't look into Chinese companies too much at all, um, so I wouldn't want to give any suggestion of what I would do with this kind of company. I, I know from their fundamentals that they have good cash reserves and profit margins, and I do know that uh, the government of China itself is making a massive, massive push um, for EV. That, that'll probably be uh, their next big boom. 
uh, regarding their economy. So we should see how that goes. It, a lot of the Chinese companies, too, get into weird legal waters as well. Um, so it's, it's kind of hard. I, a more a stabilization in kind of how the politics work over there um, would be uh, more beneficial for um, investors outside of the nation. Um, however, China's obviously a, a superpower regarding its economy. So, um, you know, taking a look at Chinese stocks, I think, is important, especially in the EV sector. I have a Chinese friend um, who is in uh, the financial uh, business as well, and he is uh, diehard for all of those companies. I'm sure there's a little bit of a bias there, too, but he's a very intelligent guy. So, um, all right, some of the... Some of the last things, I guess, on quantum computing before we can go on. Uh, people who have worked on it for companies like Google suggest that we are kind of far off from all of it, um, which, you know, it, it, it makes sense. These, again, these, what we have is usually like huge hypes followed by actual applications to it. Um, we have something called decoherence or DK in quantum, uh, well, just in the quantum realm itself. Any kind of and it really any kind of distribution of um, information of data from one source to another. Um, this is caused by like very slight disturbances in the environment itself that can cause the whole um, computational network to kind of collapse on itself. Um, when you, the way that computers usually work um, is you have, when you connect cables into something even like Wi-Fi, you're sending light through it, right? And this light is sent in a pulse way, in such a way um, that it uh, conveys information, that information is in, in a binary sense, and then is um, translated by your computer. Of course, it gets very complex when you get to like all these kind of interfaces and stuff that we have now. But that's generally how it works. So quantum computing isn't as reliable regarding that. It certainly is more powerful, but um, this is a big issue they have to figure out, just transmitting the information and having it not uh, go down, you know, 10 lines as if you're playing the telephone game or something like that. Um, additional issues with it currently is um, error correction during the com uh, computing stage has not been perfected. Um, this makes computations potentially unreliable, which if you're using it for things like drug design um, or uh, military um, purposes or aerospace engineering, obviously is a uh, extraordinary issue. Um, another issue with it, again, this is kind of along the lines of um, of data decay with it and data corruption as retrieving computational results can corrupt the data itself. Um, developments such as particular database search algorithms that ensure the act of measurement will cause a quantum state to decohere and the correct answer hold promises, it said in the article. Um, again, I think this is, this is a problem they're uh, cognizant of. They just need to keep going with it. And the biggest uh, benefit, in my opinion, beyond the drug design and genomic testing uh, is the cryptography capabilities of quantum computing is not there yet. It's, it's just not there yet. Um, they, they also need to have almost zero atmospheric pressure. Um, so, you know, I don't know if that means they have to place these servers in higher altitudes. Uh, I, know, I mean, I know that sounds silly, um, but that's kind of what's going on with it. Um, and they, they need temperatures of absolute zero um, or near absolute zero to function properly. So the idea of having quantum computing in your home uh, by 2030 is not going to happen. Um, however, I, again, as I said, there's concerted efforts by some of the largest corporations, uh, multinational corporations that we have uh, going into this. Um, this could be huge for AI. Um, the AI is, is really massive, and I think we will actually see that rolling out far sooner um, than, than people anticipate. There have been, uh, not to make the pun, but quantum leaps in it recently. Um, you had that uh, guy from Google uh, working on the Lambda bot who said that the bot was sentient. It's, it's not. Uh, there's no... Uh, I actually, I, I took a little bit of time the other week uh, because I had nothing going on. Um, to sit down and like work with these just chat bots essentially and see how it operated and they are very good at being able to answer your questions um they're it just you're it's clear that you're not having a real conversation with any kind of sentient thing these if you look at um tesla's ai bot uh the the first suggestion they have for the chat is uh ask me 
um, what your, where to get my favorite ice cream, right? Um, so this is going to be used for like just broad scale commercial purposes. Um, you know, search functions. Um, if I ha if you have an issue with something, you can call the AI will answer. Um, and and they actually are quite good in that way. But having a um, uh, a Skynet buddy is not really in the cards for the time being. And I think the largest um, uh, neural network they have uh, is only about a little over a million neurons in uh, in Manchester, UK. The human brain has trillions of them. Um, so it's just it's just not there yet. So we we don't need to uh, It's not Terminator yet or anything like that But I think it's important to really look at these companies that are providing servers for the AIs um, Because I think this is another big big leap forward just in the realm of, of, of Service which obviously is massive in developed countries and continues to grow in developing countries themselves Another interesting thing we have today is um, the nasal, nasal COVID vaccine. So when I would get, you know, as a child, when I would get flu shots, probably a little older than a child, I would always opt for the nasal ones. I just thought they were easier. They were less invasive, obviously. Um, and I, I had wondered consistently why there were not nasal equivalents, um, excuse me, not nasal equivalents for the COVID vaccine currently. So India and China, so apparently Russia initially had been working to get their Sputnik vaccine uh, aerosolized. And I know that Iran, out of all places, had actually developed one a little while ago. But it seems that India and China's nasal vaccines are massive. So China's is aerosolized, right? You run it through something called a nebulizer, and it just essentially adds air particulates into it, and it becomes a mist, so that is very similar to uh, the flu vaccine, nasal flu vaccines that we have in America. India's is a drip vaccine. I'm not sure why you would opt for one or the other. I know that regarding uh, mucosolar vaccines, that um, aerosolized is, is a, more of a standard. But regardless, it seems like the efficacy is the same. When we get back, we can go a little bit more into the companies that are developing these, kind of how they work and why... Um, uh, some people believe these are actually more effective um, than just the injection shots alone. Um, it's very interesting. Uh, let's see what we got here. And I will say too that this paper that I have um, regarding these vaccines is from, from Nature. So it is, it's a good source on it. Um, of course, these vaccines have, are only in phase two trials, so they're not phase three, um, which means that they won't be rolled out immediately. Um, but it seems that uh, there's really good promise on these. So we can hit that when we get back. Um, again, give me a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, message me in the den, message me in YouTube. My email is jacob at tfnn.com. We'll be right back, folks. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Okay, so just to kind of wrap up what's going on with these nasal COVID vaccines, um, according to the journal Nature, with this, the, the idea is that you are, um, you are delivering the vaccine right in the mucosular area, which is where the virus itself starts in. Um, according to them, uh, in theory, this could prevent uh, even mild cases in totally block transmission, which is actually really the uh, absolute standard. It's called, um, it's called a sterilizing immunity. Um, uh, so China's vaccine is developed by a company called CanSino Bio, uh, Biologics. I don't know really what to make of this chart whatsoever. Some, some of these kind of like budding pharmaceutical, uh, excuse me, biotech companies um, can obviously act a little strange. And um, so we have this going on, but it is developed by CanSino. This does have um, backing by the Chinese government themselves. Um, it contains the same ingredient as the initial vaccine. Um, obviously, they took it through a mixture, aerosolized it, and the uh, health department of China is suggesting that this is actually a very good booster um, in addition to the other shots as well. Um, data from the phase two uh, study found that when the inhaled vaccine was given as a booster, the vaccine raised the blood serum levels significantly more than the injection booster, suggesting that protection is good or better uh, is good or better than provided by just the shot alone. Um, India, using the drip technology for it, um, is developed by Bharat Biotech. I'm not sure if these guys are listed. Um, let me see here. Yeah, I don't see anything. I'm not sure these guys are listed, um, but they have a, they have a lot of stuff moving to, uh, and they're using uh, the same kind of. Um, uh, mixture that they use in um, their shots. Now, India is actually using this as the prime, well, excuse me, um, it, this is being touted and would be used by India as the primary method of inoculation. Um, something that's interesting, a little bit of history with it, the uh, first mass inoculation that ever occurred, at least in recorded history, was actually at Valley Forge um, during when the Continental Army was huddling there for the winter time. Um, a disease ran through the ranks and uh, it was actually looks like it might spell the end uh, for the Continental Army and their efforts against the British Crown. Um, it's said that the um, slaves at that time had a method of inoculating themselves that they brought over from Africa. And this is a, this is a um, obviously a crude form of it. And what would happen is they would take, um, you know, they would take either the blood or some of the pustule um, from the disease, and then they would make small incisions on the healthy people and apply that to the body. And obviously that is a, it is a very pure form of inoculation, right? Because you're getting the disease in in a small form, um, and uh, the body can create antibodies against that. So Washington uh, used this uh, concept 
um, and applied it, and uh, the Continental Army was able to make it through the winter and then go on to win the war. I think that's pretty. I think that's pretty neat history. Um, and yes, I did read that at the Valley Forge Museum in uh, January. <laughs> uh, both the vaccines use a viral vector. Um, this is essentially using a virus to transmit the information that's needed. Um, the main vehicle for these are something called adenoviruses. These are non-harmful to humans. Um, and again, as I said earlier, the pinnacle of um, immunity from inoculation is sterilizing immunity. And this means that the vaccine itself stops total transmission and prevents even mild illnesses when the disease is introduced. Some other cool things happening. I know we were talking about chips last time. Um, it says chip delivery time shrank in August, but some of the shortages drag on. This is obviously good news. Um, this might be nice to have this starting to ramp up, um, especially in a time <clears throat> where uh, prices are so high due to supply, lack of supply and um, extreme demand. It says chip delivery time shrank again in August, a sign of the global shortage is easing further, uh, but some types of semiconductors remain hard to find. Um, lead times, the gap between uh, when a chip is ordered and when it is delivered averaged 26.8 weeks in August. And really all this, everything that had chips in it was insane and insanely overpriced. I, I have some friends who were uh, into gaming and all of their higher end uh, computers, um, or excuse me, materials for the computers were just not coming in. And they were spending thousands of dollars um, on these, uh, on these uh, little pieces of technology. Uh, that day was shorter, uh, that was a day shorter than they were in the prior month. So not immensely, uh, not an immense, um, can't think of the word. Je ne sais quoi, I don't know. Uh, not an immense difference, I suppose. The shorter wait times reflect slowing demand for some kinds of technologies, namely phones and personal computers, according to the Susquehanna analysts, Chris Rowland. But parts of the market remain overheated with orders coming in fast uh, that chip makers, um, too fast that the chip makers can't fill them. Uh, so I think with um, increasing uh, or tighter monetary restrictions, um, kind of crushing demand, and then a even slight increase um, uh, or improvement in the supply chain um, could actually, uh, obviously would be very beneficial for us. Um, so what else do we have going on here? Uh, Morgan Stanley expects, this is, this is more of an article, use these three, you know, whatever. Uh, but Morgan Stanley expects the S&P 500 to plunge another 15 to 25% within the next four months. Now, um, they're saying that this recent increase um, or, you know, pivot away from uh, this essentially week of, of down days is because the market has priced in the interest rate increases for this month. Um, and so, you know, while that's probably true, um, I, I would agree that this is probably not entirely over. I think the market so desperately wants to be bullish on everything, right? I mean, who, who, who doesn't want to be right? Everyone does very well when the economy just keeps going and the markets just keep, keep going up and we have green day after green day. Um, however, I do think a bit of, um, of essentially kind of taking a sober look at it, um, as much as everyone's portfolio has been hit, um, that we are probably not fully out of this yet. Um, and uh, we'll see what happens in November if they stick with the consensus of a 0.5 basis point increase um, or they, uh, or they um, raise it to 0.75. I mean, we could legitimately see like a 4% uh, Fed fund rate, um, which would, uh, you know, it'd be kind of devastating. But that's the point, essentially, right? crush that. Take a look at the dollar. We have the dollar making some crazy moves. Let's see here. Uh, we can just do a one month chart. So obviously we peaked pretty high at 110. Um, did not bring immense amount of selling pressure. Obviously immediately we had a retrace, excuse me, not a retracement, but a down. We're thinking we're going down to the 108 level here. We could see like 107 by the end of the day. Um, this could be really good for the metal market if it persists at that price. Um, but it, to be quite honest, I'm, I'm not sure. I mean, we could get any news at any time that this spikes us out or just trading in general. So with the SPX up 1.27, the NDX up 1.8, 
Q's down 1.8 or up 1.81. So this is a pretty, it's a pretty good uh, day we have going on in the market. We'll probably see an increase. Um, but yeah, take a take a look out because we might have another massive retracement uh, back to the um, back to the down level in the SPX. Uh, so we will be right back again. Uh, we have a little bit of time left. 877-927-6648. Send me a message and we'll be uh, right back. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC Capital Market Assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Um, in the den, after the mention of that um, program by Washington, uh, Saul also posted uh, about pine beer, um, which is very interesting. Actually, pine beer is like huge. This is something that's kind of been like lost to us. Um, pine beer is huge in vitamin C, um, and they found out that obviously, um, well, you know, all the soldiers were getting scurvy, and they would, so they would they would actually ration out large amounts of pine beer to every uh, division or whatever grouping, um, and if they didn't ration out created uh, already manufactured pine beer, they would also um, uh, they had to provide uh, the equipment which to make it. I've always wanted to try it because I, I actually do make uh, <laughs> I make mead in my house, uh, which is like fermented like honey and water, uh, probably one of the oldest alcohols. And when I read about pine beer, probably about a few years ago, I was immediately um, uh, amazed by it. And I'm sure it probably tastes like pine, so maybe not so um, palatable, but it's interesting nonetheless. Uh, NVIDIA is up today, three straight days of um, gains on it. NVIDIA is doing something, what I was just mentioning with um, computer prices, uh, excuse me, 
materials for computers being so expensive, um, NVIDIA essentially is creating a, uh, or has created a throttled chip um, for their for gamers. So gamers are not having to compete with these massive um, uh, manufacturers uh, regarding the prices. I know Kathy Woods also bought something like 26,000 over the past few days. Um, so that's that's interesting. She just keeps scooping up and scooping up through all of it. And you got it. You got to admire that resolve for sure. Um, oh, and <laughs> so I actually forgot about that. Uh, I was at a restaurant a few days ago with one of my friends and I actually saw her walking out and I was like, oh, man, I, I like does not expect it. And my friend was like, what's going on with that? And so it's, it's interesting just to see, you know, her walking around here sometimes. Um, solar is up huge today. I know we spoke about that last time. Uh, let's get tan. Well, tan's down a little bit. Um, let's see what else we have. Well, we do have a little bit of retracement, I suppose, today. But this morning, it was uh, it was doing pretty solidly. We'll see what goes on. I'm sure this is just a little bit of trading off and, and people unloading their shares. Uh, everyone, thank you so much for joining me today. It was great to be back on again. I really enjoy it, and I enjoy talking with you guys. Um, stay tuned. We have Dave White, I think, for the next few hours. And then we got the Tom O'Brien Show at uh, 3 p.m. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great day.